Sanjay Kumar again and again is whether the results of the Karnataka Assembly elections will have any bearing on the Lok Sabha elections. The Congress will claim if the poll is right, this is a game changer. They will claim to be rejuvenated. The BJP will say Karnataka showed Modi is still popular. Look at the number of people who came to his rallies and that an Assembly election is completely divorced and delinked from a Lok Sabha election. Where do you come out on this, Sanjay Kumar? <coughs> Uh, Rahul, since we don't have any evidence to suggest whether people are likely to vote the way they are voting in the assembly elections, even for the 2024 Lok Sabha elections, so we have to rely on the past trend. And if I look at the past trend, I, we have enough evidences to suggest people have voted differently, whether it is Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan, Delhi and few other states. Even in Karnataka, if you look at the last four assembly elections and compare it with the uh, Lok Sabha elections held in 2014 and 2019, and even going back to 2009 and 2004, we see a clear difference in voting patterns when it comes to Lok Sabha elections and, in, and when people have to choose their state government. So if I rely on the past data, then there is a clear evidence that if people have voted for party A in assembly election, there is no guarantee that people are going to vote the same way when the Lok Sabha election takes place next year in 2024. So at the moment, I don't think that the same trend is going to continue in the 2024 elections. But yes, if the Congress registers a big victory, this will help the party in, you know, uh, it will, re uh, it will uh, lift the morale of the party workers, the party will seem to be more united. That might help the Congress in several other states. I'm not saying that that's going to, uh, may, that's going, that's going to be a guarantee for Congress doing extremely well in 2024, it might have some impact, but I don't see Adam, any what do you think? correlation between... The BJP oh. will say an assembly election is completely divorced from a Lok Sabha election. It will make no impact to the chances of Prime Minister Modi being re-elected next year. The opposition will think that maybe they've sensed a vulnerability, maybe anti-incumbency is catching up after 10 years and they have a better chance than they did in the last election. What do you think? Yogendra Yadav? Oh, sorry, I didn't realize it was addressed to me. Uh, I agree with uh, Sanjayji that, of course, uh, there is no guarantee, especially in Karnataka. Karnataka, there has been a very clear vote splitting. So from the vote share in assembly election, there is no guarantee that it would immediately translate into Lok Sabha. He's absolutely right. There is no guarantee that it won't translate either. Uh, but to my mind, the real significance of Karnataka is not that, Karna though, that it would affect the 28 seats of Karnataka. Uh, it is also not that Karnataka vote may directly affect even Telangana. I don't think such things uh, happen in India anymore. Uh, the most important thing is about the overall morale, about the tone and tenor. If the BJP was to win this election, if the BJP were to win it on 13th, I'm sure all over the country, this would be drummed up all over the country. I mean, I can't even say about how the TV anchors would behave, Rahul. I can already see you dancing that day if that were to happen. So the entire country, the mood would be made different. And, you know, on television channels, they would start discussing, oh, 2024 is a done deal, etc. What the BJP's defeat in Karnataka would do, that it would make 2024 an open game. Otherwise, it would have closed the doors. That is the real significance. Second, it would change the morale of opposition workers, opposition volunteers, opposition leaders. It would show that BJP can be defeated. I think it's an extremely important thing. And since this election was the first major election coming after Bharat Jodo Yatra, uh, and towards the end it became Rahul versus Modi, and if Congress wins, then the message is, yes, Mr. Modi can be defeated. Uh, I would request one thing, Rahul, because I think last time when in Gujarat, uh, BJP won, every channel had put Mr. Modi's face and Rahul Gandhi's face. Modi won, Rahul Gandhi lost. I'm sure then when you play these things on the 13th, 
uh, should you not again put Mr. Modi and Rahul Gandhi's faces? Okay, Whoever this wins. Is Yogendra Yadav now Rahul Rahul talking Rahul more as a uh, politician rather than as a data man, but that's fine. You made a pot chart. As, you're as looking at the data. Truth, and it is very unpalatable, Rahul. That's fine. It's that's totally fine. I'm just going to let it be. I'll, I'll stay. But it is true. So I'll stay focused fully on the data. I want to show our viewers the voter turnout numbers. This is a power map of voter intensity. What this does is gives you a sense, relative to the last elections, where people came out to vote. Now, it's interesting that in Hyderabad, Karnataka, Kalyan, Karnataka, on those 40 seats, and in Bengaluru, the voter turnout was actually the lowest, whereas in other parts of the state, the voter turnout was much higher. So voter turnout in central Karnataka, for example, voter turnout in coastal Karnataka, voter turnout in uh, Hyderabad, in uh, Bombay, Karnataka, much higher than the voter turnout in Bengaluru and much higher than the voter turnout in... Uh, and that makes... The, that raises the question, why would that be the case? Sandeep Shastri, do you want to weigh in on this? Why would it be that in Hyderabad, Karnataka, for example, uh, voter turnout is so different from the voter turnout in uh, Bombay, Karnataka? And the fact that last time the voter turnout was about 72.1, this time about 72.8, uh, it's just 0.7% more than last time. Would you be reading any significance in the voter turnout and that in several seats people are voting, I'm told, till past 10 at night? Uh, Rahul, I would look at this data a little differently. You are correct in saying that in Hyderabad, Karnataka, or Kalyan, Karnataka, and Bangalore, the voter turnout is less than the rest of the regions. But look at it differently. Compared to voter turnout in 2018 in these two regions, and what has happened now, the reports say that in Kalyan, Karnataka, the voter turnout has actually increased compared to 2013. Compared to other regions, it may be less. But compared to the previous election, it has gone up. Again, data shows that in coastal Karnataka, voter turnout compared to last time has actually gone down. So very marginal increase in the rest of the state, significant increase from last time in the Kalyan Karnataka region. And that's the point I was making earlier, Rahul. Kar Kalyan Karnataka region is seeing a huge turnover if the exit poll numbers are correct. From a three-cornered contest in 2018, the exit polls are suggesting that it is a near sweep for the Congress in that region. And, and link this to the fact that voter turnout has increased in that region compared to last time, I think you are seeing the impact of a anti-incumbency vote against the state government in that region. Why has it actually declined in coastal Karnataka compared to last time? I think the saturation point for the BJP, which did well there, was last time. And therefore, there was not much scope this time for that voter turnout to increase. So I will look at more closely Kalyan Karnataka region, which saw okay. a voter turnout which was higher than last time. Though, yes. as you very rightly said, Bengaluru and Kalyan Karnataka have a lower voter turnout than other regions.